Now, Andrew, a bit of a full-on weekend for you with all these new rules and regulations. Can you explain the restrictions that the teams had to cope with? Yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, what they wanted to see was the drivers in charge of the car. So before we could coach them on, you know, a couple of years ago, we could even coach them on driving style, how to approach a corner, what gear to use. That all got clamped down. And, and this was about stopping us coaching them on how to manage the car in terms of fuel or the energy management, um, or even looking after brakes, getting the tyres in the right window. And we'd, we'd done more and more over the years, and it just got to a point where the FIA and, and Formula One decided enough was enough, and let's see the drivers back in control. So how did that affect you in terms of preparation for the first race of the season in Australia? Last well, it, it's been difficult because you don't know exactly what the regulations are going to be. As you, as you saw over the weekend, there were clarifications and another clarification. So it was hard to know exactly the game you were going to be playing. Um, but a big part of the preparation was done months ago. So looking at, you know, making the car better able to look after itself and give the driver the information he needs. Uh, we also did a lot of work in the simulator, so throwing scenarios at the drivers because before it, it was always a big safety blanket where we were there and able to jump in and instruct them and you know, tell them what to do next. Here we had to be confident that whatever the scenario, they can deal with it on their own. So how much more work was there during the weekend for the drivers and for you on the pit wall? Um, it, it wasn't too bad to be honest because what Charlie Whiting is always trying to do is to come up with a workable um, set of regulations that he can then go and regulate. And he knows what he's wanting to achieve at the end of the day. Um, the early sets we got, there were some uh, anomalies in them. For instance, we could tell the car to come in, but if suddenly it stopped raining or we weren't ready in the pits, we couldn't, we couldn't tell him to stay out. So there were a few bits like that that was really just about um, making it a you know, proper workable regulation that the teams could, could go ahead with. So because of that, were there any funny moments during the weekend where you thought, oh, let's say something and then, oh, no, no quiet? It, it went reasonably well. There's a few where, um, you know, Lewis um, asked a question and we just needed to reply that we can't, we can't say. So he was asking about an alarm that had come up on his dash and how does he get rid of it? Well, you know, he's used to coming on to us for advice. Uh, but all we can we can say is we can't tell you. So uh, then he goes away and he works it out and and, and deals on his own. So it's, it's been interesting from that point of view, and and it's difficult for us because we like to interfere and we like to be in control of everything. And now you've just got to watch the driver uh, doing it and making his own decisions. So I understand that you'd worked on a crib sheet before the race with Nico and Lewis. And how did that work in practice during the race? Well, it's just about knowing what you can say uh, quickly. I mean, you know, we get given a, a regulation that's three or four pages long. And when, you, when you're in the middle of the race, you haven't really got the time to sort of start flicking through it. So it's looking at different scenarios and what language can you apply to that and, you know, making sure it's all legal. And it, it's tricky for the engineers as well, because they've got people speaking in their ears all the time about what they need to do, what the driver needs to do and they've got to make sure they don't then go and put something uh, over the airways that would be considered a, a breach of this regulation. So lots of filtering. <laughs> yeah, lots of filtering and, you know, we'll get better at it over time, um, but it's, al it's always difficult on the first race because you're having to unlearn what you've, what you've been doing for however many years. I now would like to play a little game with you. Ooh, good. <laughs> so we have looked at the radio communications from 2015. Yeah and we're going to ask you whether the comms that we used last year would have been uh, available this year. So, let's listen to our first clip. Tyre is now feeling a little bit better again. Yeah, that's, I mean, he can tell us whatever he wants. So, uh, you know, they can talk the whole race long. Um, we can listen to the information. If they ask questions, most of them we can't, we can't reply to, but there's nothing restricting the driver talking. So lots of chatting for the drivers, but just Absolutely, not a two-way yeah. conversation. <laughs> well, we, we were telling them, you know, give us as much information as you can, because before we, we could prompt, we could say, how are the tyres? So now they're just programmed to feed it all our way. Great. OK, so we can still have that. Uh, and our last one, let's listen to this. Just ignore the dash. No need to look at that, there is an error. Can't say anything. Mm. So we'd need to leave them to, to work it out. And I mean, there was the instance where uh, Lewis asked about his dashboard. We, could, we only could say that we can't say anything, so. <laughs> Very frustrating, but I think good to see the drivers taking more control. Yep, it's all, I think it's all good for the sport and uh, it'll certainly make the racing more interesting because before we could, you know, we could uh, control the race, our job was almost to try and keep it uneventful and boring. 
Um, whereas now we've just got to let them you know, see what they do and make the most of it. Out on the track. Well, thank you so much for helping us decode all the messages. And I think practice will make perfect. So on to Bahrain. Absolutely.